lately I've been doing a lot of models that have machine screw threads uh, like these little shoulder screws and I've had a few requests to show how I draw these screw, uh, screw threads. I try to make them as close to matching the um, standards for threads and I also shoot to make them 3D printable even though these are kind of tiny this is a six millimeter screw um, so a little small for 3D printing but it could be done and I thought I would do a little tutorial all right so here's a blank screen let's go to model info for a moment I've got units set to decimal meters and no length snapping. Um, I find it's just easier to work in meters in the first place uh, for these tiny things. You can scale them down or if if you were modeling for 3D printing you don't even have to scale it down. I'm going to set out a few guidelines. Uh, that's the major radius. There's the minor radius. I'm going to put a guideline on the axis line just because, just because. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm not going all the way to the middle. I found that this actually is a lot easier to clean up to make solid if I leave a hole in the middle when I get done with this. And I know from my Uh, looking around on the internet that the um, bottom of the thread has a flat that's um, a quarter of the thread pitch and I just drew that in there and then I'm going to move it vertically until it's centered just saves me um, putting in a guideline I guess and then I'm going to draw from the ends of that line, I'm going to put in a couple of angled guidelines 30 degrees off horizontal. Um, on metric threads, the included angle between these is 60 degrees. So, 60 degrees is what I've got. All right, there's the thread profile drawn. Let's clear that. And I'm going to find Curve Maker and draw a curve. And I've already selected Helix. If you click here, it doesn't. This field normally looks is gray and it doesn't look like it's active, but it is. If you drop, click the drop down. I'm not going to give use that options field. Got the Helix selected. I'm going to do 14 turns here. What I really want out of this when I get done is 10 uh, turns. Just makes it easier to deal with later and I'm going a little long so I can cut it off um, the radius is going to be 4 because I'm making an 8 millimeter screw I'm going to use 48 sides and the curve origin I'm going to set it at um, 1.5 below the uh, red green plane and the height per turn is 1 that's the pitch and so there's that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down so that I go straight down to the end here and the reason I'm doing that is that I've found that it's easier to let the um, well first of all it's easier to draw the helix at the nominal uh, radius of the screw uh, the external threads on a 8 millimeter screw are just under the max is just under 8 millimeters uh, so it'll fit in the hole anyway so I've got that I'm good to go there I'm going to explode the group select 
the face along with that helix and then I'm going to run upright extruder. This takes a moment or two. We'll just give it a little time. So there's the threads. I'm going to select just the helix and delete it because I don't need that any longer. And so there's my screw threads. Now I'm let's look at how to make this solid and actually I'm going to end up making a little cap screw, uh, socket headed cap screw. So I'm going to switch the camera to parallel projection and the top view and I'm going to draw drag out a right to left selection window around the central part of this. I don't really want any of those faces in there. You have to be careful now you don't get into the threads, so don't make that too big. And then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make this a component. M8 by 1. So that well, two things. One is I have it in my in model components collection. So if I were to delete this from here now, I wouldn't lose it. Uh, the other thing I should do is uh, save this. We'll call it M8 by 1. Now, let's make this thing a solid. So I'm going to drag out a rectangle. At, right on the ground plane and then I'm going to and I'm outside of the component I'm going to copy that up 10 and the reason I went longer on the threads is just to make it easier to clean up this one I'm going to want to reverse and then let's select the bottom one I'm using keyboard shortcuts control X to cut to the clipboard uh, let's do this. Let's run cleanup real quick to get rid of some unneeded faces. That got rid of that, or unneeded edges mostly. Got rid of that stuff. Now I'm going to paste those rectangles in, fa in place inside the component. And then while we're in here, I turned on hidden geometry and let's go we'll use the right hand view I'm going to drag a right to left selection box just kind of like that and the reason for this is I'm going to do an intersect faces operation but I don't need SketchUp to look at every single face in the model we'll do intersect faces with selection and I'll repeat that down here if I didn't have the geometry exposed, the hidden geometry exposed, and I did this, it would look through all of these edges and faces for intersections. Now I'll turn off my hidden geometry, and I'm going to drag a right to left selection box real close, but not touching that. Uh, face. And I can delete that and that leaves me a little bit of stuff up here to clean up. Now if I had taken the time I could have run enter auto weld and that would have actually gotten rid of some of these unneeded little edges that stick up probably if I had zoomed in a little closer I'd have been better off too but now you can see the top end of this is closed and let's go back to our right side view this time we need to cut off the bottom Ooh, I got more this time cut off so it looks like I only need to do that and that and there's still something somewhere let's run solid inspector 
couple of stray edges, fix that. And now I've got a solid component. Go back to parallel projection. All right, so this thing is 10 tall. So I've got 10, 10 millimeters worth of screw. That gives me a nice uh, unit to work with. Let's go ahead and save. And now I'm going to make a cap screw that's 20 millimeters long. So I'm going to uh, bring a copy of this up and then I'm going to uh, explode it and then I'm going to cut that to the clipboard and I'm going to open this one for editing and paste that in place. Now I could have used I'm going to hide this by the way uh, for a moment and delete that face so I can see all the way down in edit unhide last I could have used uh, Enerot solid tools, or I could have used um, uh, Bool Tools 2, or even the so native solid tools to do that. But what I've found is that in this particular case, exploding the one component and putting it inside the other is actually faster. All right, so there's. 20 millimeters worth of screw. Let's put a little chamfer on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here. Oh, let's do 3.2. I'm just making up where I'm going to chamfer that. No, I don't even like that. I'm going to go a little bit less than that. We'll go 2.75. I This chamfer thing is kind of a arbitrary thing. Uh, I'm going to come off of that end point and I'm going to go up. I'm going to put a 35 degree chamfer on this thing. So now I'm going to come up here and down here and then over and like that. And on the... I, I like guidelines. I'm going to make a 48-sided circle, and it doesn't even matter what the radius is. I'm going to run follow me. We'll reverse the faces. I'm going to make that a component. I'm planning to only use this once, but if I needed it again for something, Making it a component means that the thing is left in my in my in model components until I purge the file. So I could make it a group, but then when I delete it from the model space, then it's gone, and I have to remake it if I want it again. All right, so I'm going to trim the bottom of my screw. Could have done that before I put that other geometry in there but there we go and because I don't like seeing those edges I'm just gonna hide those good enough my screw threads run out and this thing should still be a solid all right now Let's do the head. The head for a socket head screw is pretty easy. So the diameter is going to be 13, which should be a 6.5 millimeter radius. And I'm going to make it 8 tall. And then I'm going to put the socket in. So I've got the polygon tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit control the option on the Mac so I can do a circum make the polygon circum 
described around the circle and for an eight millimeter screw it should have a three millimeter socket and or use a three millimeter uh, six millimeter hex key and we'll make that seven deep and then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to make this a component. I'm not going to give it a name, but again, it's if I lose something in here, I've got it to go back to. And then I'm going to set out, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this. Um, we'll use this, and I'm going to well, actually, I don't even need to rotate this. Let's just do it that way. Come on, Richards. So I'm going to do, I don't know. Well, let's do 35 again. This time, I'm making a thing to cut a little chamfer around the edge here and I'm going to put a guideline there that gives tells me exactly where I want to go and actually what I want to do is I'm going to go just a bit out like point one we're going to go a little outside of that so we don't leave some broken geometry there and I find this is easier to do while I'm Uh, pretty close to the midpoint on that edge, didn't I? Easier to do while this is flat. So I'm going to do that. And then a circle. And follow me. Make that a solid component. I don't even have a keyboard shortcut for groups, but it could just as easily be a group again. I like it because it leaves it in my model. All right. Uh, I'm going to use that to trim that. And there's my chamfer. We'll get rid of those things. I'll explode. Cut that to the clipboard. Paste it in place. And then I'm going to temporarily hide that just to make it easier to see that face. And edit, unhide, last. Is it still a solid? Still a solid. So there, ah, and then we need to reverse that face. That's not, I'm not quite sure why it does that. but. There we go. If we wanted to, we might do a nice little chamfer. Let's do it with this. Uh, I'm going to soften and smooth and eh, 0.5 seems reasonable. Uh, actually, I didn't really want to soften and smooth it that hard. So we'll just undo it. That's easier that way. Maybe we should do a similar one on the bottom here so I guess I'll just well actually let's soften those and leave the borders there we go and we will there we go still a solid component and I have a nice little 8 millimeter socket head cap screw. Hopefully that made some sense.